looks or how much money this person makes or how much money this person doesn't make. This gospel is for everybody. It's the good news. It's the good news. It's called the Great Commission. The commission, the mission together, you and God. We've been talking about this in this series. So we talked about how there's four X's and O's, and we see this from Abraham. We're not going to be able to break what we've had in the past down. But there was four X's and O's to the Great Commission. God called him out. There's election. We talked about that in one week. Talked about election. And then we talked about God blessed him. There was ethics. It matters how you live. Christianity should translate into us uh, being affected and our lives being changed and us walking it out in holiness. There's something to that, right? Ethics. And the third thing is evangelism. And then the fourth thing is expansion. Expansion. Now, last week we started talking about evangelism. Evangelism. Greek word, eulogalion. Eulogalion. We get the word evangelist or evangel from that. And the word means good news. That's what it means. The word uh, gospel, right? The word gospel just means good news. The, the good news. The good news of victory. A, 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 a message proclaimed that would, that would, uh, that would make, make someone be happy. What if we would preach a gospel, come on now, that people would actually get excited about? Now, again, I told you last week, I'm not talking some, some kind of cushy, filly, this, that, or the I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what? Good news ought to be good news. <laughs> hey Amen. It ought to be good news to people. To go into all the world and preach the gospel, evangelism, eulogalion. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And you're going to be a blessing. We talked last week about the starting point of evangelism is being a source of blessing, being a gift to people. Just being a gift to someone. Just truly being a gift to somebody that we're around. Every day, if I'll just go and say, you know what, I'm going to be a gift to someone. I'm going to be a blessing to someone. I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to be, Lord, I want to be fully present in my life, no matter what it is. I want to be like Anna. I want to be like Simeon, where they came at the, at the right time when Jesus was being presented in the temple, right? They said they came at the right time, and they were there. Lord, I want to be fully present in my life, and I want to be a gift to people. If we want to start evangelizing, spreading the good news, evangelism means the spread of that good news, we have to begin first with wanting to be a gift and being a blessing to people. Amen. Being a blessing to people. Praise God. So there's three keys to evangelism. Three keys to evangelism. In Mark chapter 16, you can put that on the screen real quick here. Mark chapter 16, we're going to skip on down. It says, and he said to them, this is again the Great Commission. He said to them, what's the, what's the first word here? Go. Go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs will follow those that believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they, do any, if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover, verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. He sat down. Now notice what it says in verse 20. When he sat down, they went out. So when Jesus sat down, the church got up. They went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. So we talked about last week how if we're going to have three keys to evangelism, the first thing i got to do, i got to be present. i got to be present. Right? People won't want to come to us if we don't go to them. It starts by going to them. We do all kinds of stuff, and, and we're going to continue to do this, and the church has done this. We do all kinds of stuff to try to get people to come to church. we got, we got Fan Sunday coming up, right? I get that. But you know what? If we fail to go to them, they're never going to come here to us. They're not going to do that. We are domestic missionaries. We talked about that last week. I talked about this at that French poet 
that, uh, that said this. Antoine de saint Expierre once said this. If you want to convince men to build ships, don't pass out shipbuilding manuals. Don't organize them into labor groups and hand out wood. Teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. Teach, because they're going to find a way. If they fi- fall in love with the sea, they'll find a way to get to the sea. If that is on, I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. It may be, you know what, on, 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 on a, in a John boat that has holes that you filled up with uh, epoxy. I don't know what that looks like. But if you, get a, if, you get a, if you get a desire to get on the water, you're going to get on the water. It's the same thing with us. If we have a desire, love God, love others. Can't have one without the other. Jesus said, he said, the way that we are expression actually for God is how we're loving people around us. It's an expression of our faith. It's an expression of our faith. So we talked about that last week. Amen. The second thing then was presence. And we talked about how the Lord, there in Mark chapter 16, it says the Lord was working with them. You're carrying, I talk about how you're carrying the presence of God. You're carrying God. You're carrying the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Your mobile homes of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. You are temples of the Holy Spirit. It's what the Apostle Paul said. He, he called it the temple. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. He's living inside of you. You are the Holy of Holies. You are, he's in you. You're walking. He's, listen, his animation is found through you. You give animation to God. God needs a body and you and I are his body. We're the body of Christ collectively but we're also a part of the body individually and the spirit of God lives in us and we animate this thing Jesus couldn't be here so he sent us right he said said, it is expedient he said it's to your advantage that I go away because if I don't go away I can't send the comforter to you I can't send the Holy Ghost to you I can't send he's got to I want him to get in you This was the plan all along. Amen. So you're carrying the presence of God. And when that, when you know you're carrying God, guess what happens? Everything starts to change. Right? Now guess what? You ain't waiting on somebody else to pray for somebody. You're praying for somebody. I appreciate the prayer list. Right? But you know what? We look, and this church does this. Listen, we don't, we don't wait to pray for somebody. I'm praying for you now. You're talking about sending people on edge sometimes. Because why? People don't really believe what they've got. I got to get it to the pre- preacher. I got to get it to the pastor. And when I get it to the pastor, he has a better connection than what, what I do. That's not true. These signs shall follow the preacher. Is that what it says? It says the signs shall follow the pastor. It says these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Believe. <laughs> You're carrying God, man. He's in you. Jesus couldn't show up, so he sent me. Yeah. So all of a sudden you walk into those situations. You carry the presence. It's evangelism. Present, presence. And the third thing is this tonight I want to talk about is proclaim. Is proclaim. Amen. You guys cold? Anybody cold in here? Who, who would say I'm cold? Not enough. Okay. All right. Well, well, let's help him. Let's help him, ushers, Gary. Help him out back here. We don't. I don't want my wife throw something at me right now. I don't know. Just one off. Maybe that'd be good or something. That'd be good. We'll, we'll compromise. How about how we, can, we, can we compromise? All right. Proclaim. Mark sixteen. He said, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures." The word "creature" there means everybody. Preach this good news, right? Gospel. You angle on, right? This good news, this news of victory, this message of victory, I want you to go and proclaim it to everybody, right? I want you to go proclaim it to everybody. So how do I proclaim? The first way we're going to proclaim is our lives lived. Our lives lived. My words don't have much weight at all if I'm not living them. Our words will not have weight if our lives are contradictory. What are you saying, Pastor? Faith without works is what? Dead. 
And the thing is, is where ethics comes in. It's what we talked about a few weeks ago about ethics. Ethics. It matters how I'm living. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to empower you, Abraham. I'm going to cause you. I'm going to help you to be a light to the Gentiles. See, he puts his spirit in us, and our eth- ethics matters. That's why baptism was so important. It, and it needs to, it, it, it's, it's something that needs to be important to us. We're going to have baptism Sunday morning. But you know why they baptized him? Because it, when it, it was an expression of something they believed. I'm I'm making sense to you. It was their faith without works. It was part of me. I don't work for my salvation. I work out of my salvation. Right? Our our lives lives. Our lives lived. We have to be the gospel before we can do the gospel. We have to be the good news people before we can go and share the good news to people. We have to be the good news people before we can share the good news to people. I want to be the good news people. How about you? The second thing is this, how do I proclaim, preach the gospel? I'm helping you out, sharing, the, talking about present, presence and proclaim. What am I going to proclaim now? Well, I'm going to proclaim a, my personal testimony. What has Jesus done for you? Well, what does people want to hear? They want to hear what Jesus, listen, I, I'm thankful for the Romans road. I'm thankful for all of that, right? I'm thankful for those things. But people don't care as much about what you're, they want to know how has it affected your life. You know, we talked about this last week. In Mark chapter 5, in Mark chapter 5, talking about this demoniac of Gadara. And, and you can put that up there for me real quick. In Mark chapter 5, verse 15 through 19. Did you get that one? Praise the Lord. She'll find it. Personal testimony. Personal testimony. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothing in his right mind. And they were what? Afraid. Verse 16. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Because Jesus cast the, the legion of demons into the swine. Remember that. And, those who, uh, and they began to plead with him to depart from their region. Verse 18. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. Who wouldn't? However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him what? Go home to your Go home to your circle of influences. Go home to the people that you're around every day. Go home to your friends, and what are you going to tell them? Not the Romans Road. I'm, I'm not against the Romans Road, but look. Wait, go tell them what, what? Well, the great things the Lord has done for you and how he had compassion on you. What am I going to share with somebody? I'm just going to tell them how, what the Lord has done for me. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to know this or that. You can just go. You don't have to wait for the discipleship course. You don't have to go through the six points of evangelism. You don't have to go and have this or, or been saved for six years. And so just go tell somebody. This guy was demon possessed. Jesus delivered him, wanted to go with him. He said, You ain't going with me. Why, Jesus? I want to go with you. You set me free. No, no. I need you to go back to the capitalist. I need you to go back to the ten cities. And I need you to go back there. I need you to tell your friends everything that I've done for you. Amen. Personal testimony. The third thing is this, the gospel message. Personal testimony, right? Our lives live the gospel message. So the word gospel, like I said, it it has the connotation of something that has to be spoken. Okay, it's a good message, good news, something that has to be spoken. So we need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be sharing what Jesus has done. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Apostle Paul said, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? How can they believe in him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without someone to proclaim it to them? Apostle Paul uses the word preacher, but the word preacher means someone that proclaims. So everybody in this room is a preacher, a proclaimer. Well, what am I going to proclaim? That's the question. People need to hear it. 
People need to hear it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2 up on the screen here real quick. This is what Apostle Paul said. 1 Corinthians. For I determined not to know anything among you. I determined not to know what? Anything. Among you. Nothing else. I don't want to know anything else. But Jesus Christ and him what? He said, I don't want to know anything else. I don't get any theological debates. If you want to look at this, he just came out of Mars. And I'm not, this, is just for the, this is for the Bible geeks out there. Uh, this is where he was at Mars Hill. And all these philosophers were at Mars Hill. And Apostle Paul stood amongst the philosophers and was proclaiming about this Jesus had been raised from the dead. Remember the, remember the altar to the unknown God? Remember that? You know, this is, He comes out of this, goes to Corinth, and he said, listen, I don't want to know anything else among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. I'm not going to be debating with you. I just want to know. I, I want to know Jesus. I want to, that's all. The only thing I want you to know, I want to know, is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. See, let's, let's look at what the Message Bible says out here. you remember, friends, that when I first came to you to let you in on God's master strokes, I didn't try to impress you with Polly's speeches and the latest philosophy fees. I deliberately kept it plain and simple, first Jesus and who he is, and then Jesus and what he did, Jesus crucified. I want you to know who Jesus is and this crucifixion and what it means. There's a few things. Who Je He says there, who Jesus is. I, I want you to know who Jesus is. I don't want to know anything else but Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. I want you to know who Jesus is. That's what the Apostle Paul said. I want you to know, what, what, what is this gospel message? What is it about? It's about who Jesus is. Jesus Christ and him what? The greatest revelation of, of God the Father is a crucified man on a cross. That's the greatest revelation. When, Jesus, when, when God wanted to flex his muscles, you know how he flexed it? In weakness, in complete and utter, it looked like failure to the natural eyes. A naked man hanging on a tree is how Jesus, is how God flexed his muscles. Listen, I, I, the cross is a mystery. And we can sit here and talk about the cross until Jesus returns. And never plummet the depths of it. But something changed in the whole universe when Jesus died. Listen. Oh my. You and I, we believe things. I know you guys have heard me say this before, but I want you to get this in. We believe things about God that are not so. If we ever want to see who God is like, the Father, all we got to do is look at Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1 says he is the perfect expression, the complete expression of who the Father is. Now you say, what's this matter? It matters because the world has all kinds of mixed up views about who God is. And what's the gospel message, the good news? I'm going to show you Jesus, and we're going to show you Jesus, and we're going to play came Jesus to you, and him crucified, and because of that, you're going to finally find out who God is. Because why? 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, The God of this world, talking about Satan, has blinded the minds of those that believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ would shine unto them. The enemy is trying to convince people, shutting them off to the... Listen, that's not the way God is. God's like this. He's some monster. He's over here. He's doing this. He's doing that. If you can't find it in Jesus, you can't find it in the Father. Period. Bar none. That's where we start with our theology. Jesus is perfect theology. That's where you start with it. You start it with Jesus and everything works out from there. This is the gospel message. He is God in the flesh. The greatest ploy of the enemy is to convince us of things about our good, great God that's not true. Apostle Paul said you were once alienated in your minds. Alienated. And Jesus come to straighten it all out. He comes to show us what God's really like. 
I told you this before, I'm going to say it again, God didn't send, when he sent the good news, he didn't send it in a pamphlet, he didn't send it on a text, or a computer screen, or on Facebook, he sent it in person, flesh and blood. God, Emmanuel, God with us, he walked this earth, man. <laughs> and he showed us what it looks like. What's it look like? What's God look like? This is what we got to proclaim. This is the gospel message. This is the gospel message. What God? What is God saying? What are you saying, God? J E S U S. We use words to communicate, do we not? In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was, was with God. Jesus is the Word. When Jesus is wanting to communicate to humanity, he sends Jesus. This is important because the world has lots of views about God that aren't true. Those friends that you're being sent to, right? We've got to proclaim the good news of who Jesus is. What else? We're going to proclaim what Jesus has done. Proclaim what Jesus has done. The gospel is Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It's 1 Corinthians 15. What is the gospel? The good news? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You guys have saw the bridge illustration before, correct? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I should have brought the thing out here and we could have drew it. But where we get this wrong a lot of times is that we keep God over here on this side of the, of the chasm. But that's not the way it happened. Jesus crossed the chasm to us. The cross now becomes the bridge and then walks me back across the bridge. Listen, what is separating you and I from God is sin. What's separating us from God is sin. This is what the gospel is. Everything's changed because of the cross. Sin has been dealt with. Jesus dealt with sin. Now listen, I know this may be, uh, I think pretty much everybody here would, would understand this, but understand something. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't, he didn't just die for me, he died as me. In, in Hebrews chapter 9, it says sin has been completely canceled because of Jesus' sacrifice. That's Hebrews 9, you can read it. It says it's been completely dealt with and annulled, null and void, canceled. It's in Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9, uh, 26, he has appeared to put away, that's the King James, to put away, cancel, the word put away means cancel, nullify, void, and destroy sin by the sacrifice of himself. He that knew no sin became sin. That we might be made righteous. Now this is important because the problem, the issue is with sin. Okay? And Jesus came to deal with the sin problem. It's no longer an issue. It's no longer an issue. In principle, Jesus has, has dealt the death blow to sin. The Apostle Paul goes, uh, can I show you this one? Go to Colossians 2 real quick. This is not on the screen. Look here. I'm going to get knee deep in this thing and I'm not going to be able to get out. So, <sighs> Look at this one. Colossians 2. The only thing the enemy had against you was sin. The only way he has authority over your life is that when you go and yield to him. Now look at this. Colossians chapter 2. I'm talking about the finished work of Jesus and what he's done for me. We'll get over here. Go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Go eat popcorn. Look here. Look in verse chapter 2, verse 14. Just talking about Jesus. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. What are you saying? He's talking about the debts. If you go and you, my thing says this, uh, having wiped out the handwriting. Uh, mine says up here, certificate of debt. Debt. The certificate of debt. All the things I have committed. All the ordinances and the laws that I had broken. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way. Having what? 
Now look. Now listen. The next, the next verse 15. Having disarmed. How did he disarm principalities and powers? By removing sin. The only thing, that he wiped it, the ordinances, the debt, the certificate of debt, the, the things that I had committed, the stuff that I, that's the only thing he has, it's the only thing he has against me. That's the only thing he has to work with. And Jesus has already come and wiped it out of the way. So how is that true? It's true in principle. It's like you having a million dollars and not knowing you have a million dollars in your bank account. And you living under a bridge with no food, no car, no house, when already a, thousand, a million dollars has been deposited into your account, you have no idea. What do I do to become a millionaire? Claim the money. Go to the bank. Make a, dep- make, make a withdrawal. Already, it's, this is already done in principle. It's already taken care of in principle. All I got to do now is receive my forgiveness. Receive the, the, what Jesus has done. All I got to do, he's disarmed the principalities and powers. That's right. That's good news. He's already done it, which means what? The only thing the enemy has against me, listen, only thing he, the thing that he was holding over my head, the thing that he had access to has already been destroyed. Why are we continuing to give him place? It's already been taken care of. He's put away sin and nullified it, canceled it, put it out of the way forever by his sacrifice. Hebrews 9.26. Oh, my. Oh, can I show you one more? Uh, you just follow me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is Wednesday night. I know you got to get home to the. If you can give me just five here. If you give me five, I'll take five. Verse 14. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then what? When, listen, Jesus didn't, listen did, Jesus didn't ju- just die for me. He died as me. He was the second Adam. He was like this huge, Jesus was like this huge um, sponge. On the cross. And he was soaking all the sin of humanity into him. He that knew no sin. He sucked it all in himself. And he took it. He took it to the grave. He took it to death. He took it to hell. And deposited it there. And then when he come up out of the grave. Resurrected. You and I come out what? When he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he was resurrected, I was resurrected. When he ascended to the right hand of the Father, I ascended to the right hand of the Father. You've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because you're in him. For the love of Christ compels... Go back here again, sorry. Uh, if one, if we, because if we judge thus, if one died for all, then what? All died. All. Everybody. All humanity died. This is good news. This is really, really too good to be true news. <laughs> Verse 15. Oh my. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but him who died for them and rose again. I won't live for myself anymore. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on, the cause of what Jesus done all died, right? Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. What if we could see the sinner? What if we could see what Jesus sees? What if we could see it? That sin's already been dealt with. Totally. In principle, it's already been done. It's like having the million dollars in your account, but you have not been aware. You're you're alienated in your mind. You're alienated in your mind. The God of this world is blinding the minds of those. Jesus comes, stretches him. The greatest revelation of God is a, is a crucified man, right? I don't want to know anything else except Jesus at the Christ and him crucified. And now we start understanding who God is. Why? We can turn to the Father and run to him and say, yes, this has already been done. Thank God for the good news. I received the good news into myself. Whew. Look at this now. Therefore now we regard no one according to the flesh. 
Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Verse 17, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a what? A new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us what? The ministry of reconciliation. I'm carrying this with me. Praise God. Verse 19. And that is that God was in Christ. Where was he at? He was in Christ. He wasn't away from Christ. He was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not holding sins against them. God is not, the word impute means to hold or to put to the account of someone. He said, I'm not holding sin against people now. This is gospel. Not imputing their sins, trespass to them, that's the good news. God's not holding it against you. If you want to go to hell, you go to hell because you choose to. If you choose destruction, you choose destruction. But it's already been done. Just go to the bank, make your withdrawal. And has committed to us this good news, the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Spreading this good news. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Why? It's already been taken care of. The enemy's blinding you. It's already been taken care of. Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin. To be sin for us. That we might be made, become or made the righteousness of God in him. What has Jesus done? Let's go through this real quick. I'm, I'm going to go here. We're going to fly through this. What has Jesus done? What, is, what has he done for us? What is the thing about sin? Sin separates us. Sin separates us. Let's start right here. Sin separates us. It separates us. The word sin means to miss the target. To not be together. The word hamartia is the word. It means to not be together. The word sin means to not be together. Not be in in step. It's like someone that's dancing. Like dancing with the stars. Right? You don't want me on dancing with the stars. But they have to be flowing together. This is what this word. When you are, when you are, when you are, what's it called, Tammy, when a note is discordant note or discordant where a note's off? Discordant. It's where a note, seeing is when things get off. Sin gets the beat off. You get out of step. It means to miss the mark. It's what it means to miss the mark, to miss the target. What's the target? It's the image bearer. What is the target? It's to me be an imager of God. Sin comes to, tar, to tarnish the image of God. Sin separates us. The next thing is this. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be. That's why the story is so tragic. We were made for something better than the way that we act and treat people. We're made for something better. It's subhuman to operate in sin. Jesus come to show us what true humanity should look like. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be. I'm not saved for something. I'm saved to something. You get that, right? So many people accept Jesus just to try to escape, just to try to escape hell. Wrong motive. That's not even the gospel, and it's not even what Apostle Paul had in mind. It wasn't even in the minds of the early New Testament church. You were saved to something, not from something. I'm saved for the sea. I'm saved for the kingdom. I'm saved to be an image bearer. I'm not saying destruction. Hell's not real. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying the gospel message is you're called to something, not out of something. Because when you start getting that type of gospel, it's about somewhere, sometime, someplace, somewhere else, and not living the gospel now. And Jesus said on earth, what? As it is in heaven. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be. And then the last thing is this. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be with forever. Sin is like a virus that spreads. It's, it's not static. It's dynamic. It's more like a malignancy. It slowly takes over if untreated. And Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, 
but has passed from death unto life. Jesus said, and this is eternal life, that you may know him, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What's eternal life? It's about you and I knowing God. That's John 17, 3. Jesus said it. Jesus said, this is eternal life. This is what eternal life is. Eternal life is you knowing God. You getting in a relationship with God. You knowing the Father, you knowing Jesus. That's what eternal life's about. I'm meant to be with him forever. And when I choose not to do that, I go into destruction. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be with. Sin separates who we were meant to be with forever. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be. Sin separates us from who we were meant to be with. It's a with there. To be, meant to be with forever. I'm made to be with him. And this is the good news. This is evangelism. This is what we're sharing. What Jesus has done for us. He said, I don't want to know anything else except this. Jesus Christ and what? Him crucified. Which means what? He's come to deal with the sin problem. He's come to deal with the death problem. Now, we're, not, we're, we're catching up to that. That's why when people die in the Lord, they are never, listen, they are with Jesus. Death is no longer a destination. It's a thing I go through. But it's no longer a destination. No longer a destination anymore. Because Jesus defeated it. Now, one of these days, we're catching up. We're catching up with it. It's here, but not yet. We're the final enemy. The very final thing is actually the physical death will be actually taken and put under the feet of Jesus. Amen? This is the good news. Come to deal with sin, the sin problem. And what about the good news, church? What about if we could proclaim to people, God's not holding sin? That's what the Apostle Paul said. God's not imputing sin anymore. He's not holding sin against you. There's not one person that goes into destruction. I'm going to say something. Because sin's been dealt with. They make a choice not to accept Jesus. What a What a shame. What a shame that we couldn't we wouldn't proclaim that. God's not holding sins against you. He's already been dealt with the problem, dealt with the problem through Jesus. All you got to do is what? Receive. Receive what he's done. You say, well, Pastor, are you saying sin doesn't cause problems? Oh no, no. Sin causes problems. We live in a world that has sin in it. And if we yield to sin, we're gonna the wages of sin is what? We're going to experience that. That's not the life we've been called to. Amen. So, X's and O's again. Election. Ethics. Evangelism. And then next week we're going to talk about the final step in this thing, which is expansion. And we'll talk about discipleship next week. Because the way that this thing will get propagated is by discipleship. Proclaiming evangelism, yes, but when people get born again, they need to be discipled. Because once they begin to be discipled now, we can begin to go and make more disciples. 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 And, more disciples, and you get the point. And the expansion of the kingdom happens. Amen. Praise God. You guys get that? Where's my Bible? Oh, there it is. Let's